Hello everyone, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Um, my name is Matthew Johnson and um, this is my video for facilitation techniques. So the technique I chose was therapeutic use of humor. I chose humor therapy out of the large variety of techniques because to put it plain and simple, I love to laugh. So, I mean, who doesn't love to laugh? People always say math is a universal language, but in my opinion, the real universal language is actual comedy. So, everybody has a different sense of humor. Usually, common interests play the biggest role in bringing people together for a good laugh. But humor is a difficult concept to identify. Things that are funny to some people are not funny to others, and comments that are funny in one context are not funny in another. So, I mean, here, let me give you a quick example of what I remember from back in elementary school as being the jokes back then. So then, back in elementary school, all the kids used to tell your mama jokes all the time, from what I remember. And the jokes that I clearly remember a lot is the, out of those your mama jokes is like, your mom is so fat that when she stepped onto a scale, it said to be continued. <laughs> or another one I heard all the time was, your mama's teeth so yellow that um, when she looked at oncoming traffic, they slowed down. <laughs> I mean, and like those are just some of the like jokes that I heard. I mean, either way, these this brings me back to my point that you might not have found one of these jokes funny and the other one funny. Or maybe you just found both of them corny, so you just gave me a blank face while watching my video. It's all good. Regardless of which way you reacted, I never knew that um, there was such thing as a therape therapeutic side of humor. I found it very interesting that humor is medically used as therapy for people around the world. And, um, I mean, for some history on therapeutic humor... Um, there's no real specific origin of where humor came from. It's, it's pretty unknown. Humor has been part of human experience for the span of um, recorded time. And maybe uniquely, maybe just a human trait. But Aristotle asserted that humor had its origins in improv and the lyrics of songs. So, I mean, classically, a tragedy would be distinguished from comedy and there would be a pretty big difference in how they played their roles. So let's first say in the tragedy role, it would be focused on people who were stronger and much more powerful or wiser than average people, while comedy focused on people who were less powerful or not as wise as the average person. So I mean, those people would usually be identified as fools or gestures, and um, comedy and humor can be found in pretty much every era of Western civilization. And many benefits that you can get from the actual therapeutic use of humor and um, a good laugh are endless. One of those could be re it reduces stress, which lowers blood pressure and increases circulation which boosts the oxygen flowing through your body and in return keeps your heart and brain um, alive. And with those improvements, it gives you a longer lifespan at the end of the day. Another one would be it boosts endorphins like serotonin, which is excellent um, for patients that may be going through a rough patch or patients that are severely depressed. Could definitely make a huge difference in that. And um, a thirdly, um, laughing does engage your core, so technically, the more you laugh, the more you actually are working on those tricky abdominal muscles. So, I mean, not only will therapeutic humor help a patient be in a better mood, but it can even give them the power to put others in a better mood as well as bringing a smile um, to another person's face, which is very contagious, if you guys didn't know. Um, and that could possibly help a patient stay motivated, positive, and on a healthy track. So um, there are some therapeutic foundations of therapeutic use of humor, which may not be explainable by only one theory. There are 
a couple, but the two major theories that I've um, read about and came up um, with that are the most important that I think from what I've read is um, these two here. Um, one theory being more permanent than the other coming from a guy named McGee in 1979, he identified the incongruity theory, which is often discussed as the difference between what is expected and what actually happened happens as an example would be um, a joke that leads to leads an audience in one direction while the punchline actually comes from an entirely different direction. So the joke works in part due to the incongruity of the last line. So without the last line, the joke would just be not funny and pretty much just like a statement. So I mean, our book did give us an example of what I'm talking about. And they referred to the TV show with Jimmy Fallon. And um, that show is The Tonight Show. And um, the joke that um, they said that Jimmy Fallon used, where he used um, this actual incongruous direction, um, incongruity theory, was he, he said that this was the joke here. The, um, the FBI has released an 83-page manual to help agents decipher slang on Twitter. Not to be confused with my parents who have an 83 page manual to help them log into Twitter. Dun, dun, dun. Um, yeah, so that was his joke. But I mean, if you look at the joke and analyze it, you'll see without the last line, there is no joke. It would just be a statement stating that the FBI released an 83 page manual to help its agents decipher slang on Twitter. There would be pretty much no joke at that point. So, I mean, 